We shall commence this module by discussing about solution to environmental problems in brief. There is an important role of property rights in evaluating and implementing market-based approaches to solving environmental problems. The polluting firm thinks it has the right to pollute. However, the victim feels that she has the right to clean air. This dispute needs to be resolved in order to obtain socially efficient amount of pollution. Coase theorem that states that under certain conditions, it makes no difference to efficiency whether the polluter has the right to pollute or the victim has the right to clean air. As right to pollute and right to clean air are both property rights that has value, if trade is allowed in those rights, efficiency should prevail. In other words, as long as both parties are free to bargain, the final amount of pollution will be independent of the initial allocation of property rights. The problem arises as both the polluter and the victim think their position is justified. The market fails to fix the problem because no one or both parties has the property rights. According to the Coase theorem, the legal system must ensure that property rights are vested with one party. It could be either polluter or victim. And then, because we assume free bargaining, the market will ensure an efficient solution. This aspect of Coase theorem goes well with the function of taxes and subsidies for internalizing negative externalities, like pollution. Well-defined property rights can help in pollution control in similar way like taxes and subsidies. It is worth noting that in the short run, when there is no time for new firms to enter the industry, taxes and subsidies, both which are considered as price for pollution, might yield the same outcome. The cost bargaining solution let market set this price for pollution and hence solve the problem. Well, after studying this module, you should be able to understand first the Coase theorem and then learn the importance and implications of assignments of property rights. To understand the wealth effects of the Coase theorem and to understand the policy significance of the Coase theorem. Let us now understand the Coase theorem and assignments of right. To most effectively present Coase theorems, we rely on an example of a refinery and a laundry facility. The laundry is the victim, as the pollution generated by refinery interferes with the cleaning process of laundry. Now these are the only two players involved, and this implies pollution problem would not exist if either the refinery were not there or the laundry were not there. It is neither given nor obvious where the property rights should be vested. We first examine what would be the efficient level of pollution, which is the situation one. We then examine what happens if the laundry has the rights to clean environment, which is situation two, or alternatively, the refinery has the right to pollute, which is situation three, efficiency. In marginal terms, efficiency is achieved when the marginal cost of pollution control by the refinery is equal to the marginal damage of the pollution to the laundry. Consider figure where the efficient outcome is associated with A star. The total profit in this case would be profit of refinery with A star plus profit of laundry with A star. But there are two other possible marginal outcomes. First, the refinery ceases operation. Second, the laundry ceases its operation. From the efficiency perspective, the profit level associated with these three circumstances should be assessed and the action that dictates largest profit levels must be taken. So if both facilities operate, the total profit would be the profit of refinery with A star plus the profit of laundry with A star. If laundry shuts down, that means abatement is equal to zero the total profit of the refinery will be pi r with zero abatement. 
But if the refinery shuts down, that means abatement will be equal to 1. The total profit will be profit of the laundry with abatement 1. Now second situation is when the victim has rights. Suppose if the laundry has legal property rights to clean air and then if the refinery wants to pollute, it will have to compensate the laundry for any damages. There are three possible outcomes here as well. The first outcome would be both the refinery and laundry operates and refinery compensates laundry for pollution. B. The refinery shuts down. And C. The refinery buys laundry and shuts it down. The profits in each of these three situations are given as if, the, if both facilities operate, total refinery profit will be profit of refinery at A star plus profit of laundry at A star minus the profit of laundry with abatement equal to 1. If laundry shuts down with abatement 0, total refinery profits will be profit of refinery with abatement 0 minus profit of laundry with abatement equal to 1. But if the refinery shuts down, that means abatement is equal to 1, total refinery profits will be 0. Note that the conditions in situation 2 are identical to conditions in situation 1 where we discussed efficiency aspect except that profits in each of these three cases is lower by the profit of laundry with abatement 1. Now the third situation is when the polluter has rights. Consider the case where the polluter has the right to pollute. So if the laundry does not want the pollution, then it must bribe the refinery to cut back its emissions. As before, there are three possible outcomes. A. Both refinery and laundry operates with laundry bribing refinery to reduce pollution this time. B. The laundry shuts down and the third situation or the outcome is the laundry buys the refinery and shuts it down. Now when both facilities operate, the total laundry profit will be profit of refinery at A star plus profit of laundry at A star minus profit of refinery with zero abatement. If the laundry shuts down, that is when the abatement is equal to zero, total laundry profit is zero. Now if the refinery shuts down, that means abatement is equal to one. Total laundry profit will be profit of laundry at abatement 1 minus profit of refinery with abatement 0. Note that conditions in situation 3 are identical to conditions in situation 1 except that profits in each of these three cases is lower by profit of refinery at abatement 0. Economic intuition tells us that the conditions in all the three cases are identical. The outcome will be the same independent of how property rights are assigned. Moving on to discuss the Coase theorem and implication of property rights. The preceding discussion illustrates that the pollution problem can be solved through bargaining between the polluter and the victim without worrying about the initial assignments of legal rights. The only important thing that matters is that there should exist possibility of easy bargaining. However, this easy and costless bargaining is difficult to achieve in many circumstances. Now imagine a situation where there are many victims but a single polluter. Then having all the victims agree to pay the polluter to reduce pollution would be difficult. The assumption of no transaction costs is hence a very strong assumption. Transaction costs are the cost of carrying out a transaction over and above the exchange of the money for a good. Transaction cost covers all the costs associated with agreeing to transact or in other words, it is an extra payment associated with consummating a transaction. A more subtle kind of transaction cost is involved in bargaining. Bargaining might not entail any monetary costs, however, there are psychic costs associated with striking bargains. 
Such impediments are also considered as transaction costs because they are just as real as the monetary costs. Thus, many economists have defined Coase theorem in the following way. Assume a world in which some producers or consumers are subject to externalities generated by other producers or consumers. Further, assume, I'll say one, everyone has perfect information. Two, consumers and producers are price takers. Three, there is a costless court system for enforcing agreements. Four, producers maximize profits and consumers maximize utility. Fifth, there are no income or wealth effects. And sixth, there are no transaction costs. In this case, the initial assignment of property rights regarding the externalities does not matter for efficiency. If any of these conditions does not hold, the initial agreement of rights does matter. It is also argued that zero cost transaction assumption is most important to Coase theorem. Hence, the presence of significant transaction costs limits the practical application of the Coase theorem in most of the real world situations. Coase theorem directs our attention away from efficiency arguments to explain the way property rights should be allocated. Imagine a case where the victim is assigned the property right. The version of the Coase theorem discussed so far says that the victim will be willing to sell right to clean air up until the point where the damage suffered by victim from one more unit of pollution is exactly equal to the amount the polluter is willing to pay for it as compensation. In the presence of transaction costs, the victim will also add the bargaining cost to the damages. The result in this case will be less pollution as compared to the case without the transaction cost. But now imagine that polluter has the property right to pollute. The victim will now have to pay a larger amount as bribe if polluter includes the transaction cost. So given any monetary constraints of the victim, the polluter may cause more pollution. It is interesting to note that the amount of pollution vary depending upon who gets the initial property rights. Thus, the legal system of property rights has a deeper impact. The outcome depends heavily on the assignment of initial property rights in presence of transaction costs. Cooter, in his work in 1987, argues that even when there do not appear to be transaction costs, there are impediments to reaching bargains. He points out that in bilateral negotiations, the bargaining may break down due to inability to decide on the precise division of the gains. A case of public goods can be viewed as a nice example with no transaction cost, but as many affected parties must bargain with the polluter, there may be a difficulty in striking a good bargain. Now next we shall discuss Coase theorem and wealth effects. Another important clause in the Coase theorem concerns wealth effects. Bargaining outcome creates wealth for the owner of the property right. If one is endowed with the right that has value, she is considered rich and in the absence of the right, she may be deemed as being poor. There is another spin to the wealth effects argument. For example, that if the victim has the right to clean air and he receives compensation by selling that right, then this might increase his demand for clean air. Similarly, if polluter has the right to pollute, then any money he makes from the bribes to reduce pollution may end up increasing his demand for emissions. Similar to the transaction cost case, the final outcome depends on initial allocation of property rights. Because the demand for a good depends upon income, the existence of the wealth effects would generate differences in the final bargain, depending upon how rights were initially allocated. Further, generation of income by selling the property right might entice others to want to take advantage as well. With free entry in market, the assignment of property rights to the firm may induce other polluting firms to enter the market in the lookout for some gains from bargaining. Similarly, if the property rights are assigned to the victim, then creating wealth through bargaining and sale of property rights 
might entice new victims to enter the market. The simple version of the Coase theorem assume away entry by both new firms and new victims. Thus, in the presence of transaction costs, it is of importance to know where rights are initially vested. So, when rights are initially established by the legal system, it is important to vest rights in those parties that have greatest willingness to pay for those rights. One cannot completely depend on trade or redistribute rights to pollute. Attention should also be paid to reducing the transaction cost associated with trading rights to pollute. It is important to note that proceeding discussion does not undermine the simple version of Coase theorem. Coase theorem in none of its arguments suggests that property rights are not important. A complete set of property rights is necessary for a market to support Pareto optimal allocation. Coase lays importance on the fact that efficiency does not depend on how these rights are distributed. If trading in these rights is easy and costless, they will subsequently be traded so that they end up in the right hands. Now let us understand the bargaining solutions. The fundamental problem of Coase's view of property rights involves striking an agreement. Other issues relevant to the pollution control problems deserve special attention too. Pollution is a public bad with usually large number of victims and small number of polluters. Furthermore, damage to victims is often private information which creates incentives for free riding. Striking a bargain when more than two individuals are concerned is also another issue of concern. Free riding, let's consider that. Suppose there is one polluting power plant surrounded by a number of people who suffer from pollution. If people have the right to clean air, the power plant will have to compensate people for damage. On the other hand, if the right to pollute is vested with the power plant, the people surrounding the power plant will have to get together to pay the plant to restrict pollution. The problems of reaching agreement among the people surrounding the plant are significant. To cite an example, suppose there are 10 people around the plant and the cost of cleaning up the plant completely is 41 rupees and the damage to each person from the pollution is 5 rupees. Thus the aggregate damage is 50 rupees and hence it is socially desirable to undertake pollution control for the net gain of 9 rupees. The damage is private information now to the individuals though we have stated it to be 5 rupees. Now consider the following two situations. Suppose first the power plant has the right to pollute. Coase theorem suggests that the efficiency can be attained via payments from individual to the plant. One possibility is that all 10 people get together and each contribute 4.1 rupees to clean up the plant. However, it is entirely possible that one of the individual pretends that she does not mind pollution and hence she is not really willing to contribute anything. In this case, the other 9 individuals can each contribute rupees 4.56 and collect a total of rupees 91.04. One person free rights, but we are still able to obtain the Pareto optimum outcome. However, if two people get the idea to free ride, there is no way the other eight people can pool money to raise 41 rupees in order to do so. They may have, because in order to do so, they may have to contribute more than five rupees each. They may not be willing to pay more than actual damage to them. Consequently, when the pollution rights are vested with power plant, the problem of free riding combined with private information on the damages makes it very difficult to reach a Coasean solution. Now suppose that the individuals have the right to clean air. That implies that power plant must compensate the individuals. In order to do so, the plant must estimate the total damage and check whether the total compensation exceeds the cost of pollution control. The plant can either compensate the victims or resort to pollution control, whichever is less. If the power plant decides to compensate the victims, then it will have to ask the victims about their damage as damage is private information. Hence, there are incentives for the individual to overstate this damage. If the actual damages are modest but victims overstate it, then the polluter will have to resort to the installation of pollution control equipment.
when it is optimal to compensate. Thus, the tendency to overstay damage could lead to excessive compensation and overzealous pollution control measures. The reason these problems arise is because of the non-rival aspect of the pollution. This leads to free riding and difficulty in striking bargains. But in the case of rival goods, we might not encounter such a problem. Cost theorem is most applicable when two individual firms or people are bargaining. We do not have a problem of free riding and negotiating costs. There is, however, a more fundamental problem when more than two people are bargaining. There may be no bargain that is agreeable to all three people, even when transaction costs are not present. Striking a deal to eliminate externalities may not be as easy. The problem of reaching agreement over pollution is just another form of transaction cost. Difficulties in reaching agreement must be considered while applying Coase theorem to real world problems. Now we will try and understand the policy significance of Coase theorem. The Coase theorem is remarkable because it is counterintuitive. Its real beauty is that it focuses attention on the assumptions that may be required for market based solutions to work. Thus, the theorem is presented separately from other market based solutions like uh, taxes and subsidies and permits to counter environmental problems. Well, the policy implications of course theorem are first, transaction costs are important in factor in determining efficient distribution of rights in order to ensure clean environment. While designing a set of property, property rights for the environment, it is important both to distribute them efficiently and also to reduce the cost associated with trading those rights. The markets for right to pollute have become increasingly common and hence reducing the transaction cost has become important in ensuring smooth trade in rights. Another policy implication of the course theorem is to absorb the idea of victims of pollution pay polluters to reduce pollution. Often the right to pollute is not considered a valid property right and the convention of polluters should pay prevails in many parts of the world. Often polluters have a very strong lobby and their political power is such that it becomes difficult to make them pay to reduce pollution. This can often result in a stalemate and can only be resolved by acknowledging a possibility of victims paying up for cleanup. Pollution reduction should be the primary goal and decision on who pays for it is a secondary issue. Coase theorem focuses our attention on the set of conditions that help or hinder market based solution to environmental problems. Now let us summarize whatever we have learnt in this module. First and foremost, Coase theorem states that under certain conditions it makes no difference to efficiency whether the, pollution, whether the polluter has the right to pollute or the victim has the right to clean air. As right to pollute and right to clean air are both property rights that has value and if trade is allowed in those rights, efficiency should prevail. Now, three cases were examined. First, the efficient level of pollution. We then examined what happens if the laundry has the right to clean environment and third, the refinery has the right to pollute. Zero cost transaction assumption is most important to Coase theorem. Hence, the presence of significant transaction cost limits the practical application of the Coase theorem in most of the real world problems. Another important clause in the Coase theorem concerns wealth effects. Bargaining outcome creates wealth for the owner of the property right. If one is endowed with the right that has value, she is considered rich. In the absence of the right, she may be deemed as being poor. 